<laughs> hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a little bit different video. Actually, a very different video. So I usually talk about health and nutrition, and today I'm going to be talking about something that happened to me a long time ago, and I hope that my story will help others who are struggling with the same situation. So I had my last baby at 31 years old, and when you have babies, a lot of times your hair will fall out because your hormones have changed, and it will fall out for maybe a few months, maybe six months, maybe up to a year after having a baby, which is normal. And then you get back to your normal hair growth pattern and you don't have any issues after that. But after about 18 months, I continued to shed hair. And so my doctor did some blood testing and found out that my ANA, which is your anti-nuclear antibody test, was high. That tests for autoimmune diseases. And so along with the hair loss and the anti-nuclear antibody test, my doctor sent me to a connective tissue specialist who actually took a little sample out of my scalp and analyzed it. And what they told me was that I had two different things going on. One of them, I can't even remember what they called it, but it basically meant that something was going on inside my body and my hair was reacting to that. The other thing they let me know is that I had a genetic propensity to have female pattern hair loss. So I was pretty devastated back then thinking that at some point in my life I could lose all of my hair and that was a really scary thought um, at 31 years old. So the years went on and I found out that I had fibroid tumors, which was probably the reason that I had that other test that said something was going on in my body. And so I ended up having to have a full hysterectomy in my late 30s. Uh, because I was hemorrhaging and literally not getting better. And the doctor said that they could remove the fibroids, but that they would just grow back. And my mother had the same thing and my sister had the same thing. So we just generally had problems. I had had problems prior with endometriosis. I'd had two surgeries for that. And um, I just had difficult problems all around with female issues. So after um, I had my hysterectomy, I noticed that my hair really started to thin. So I got scared and stopped coloring my hair. So in my early 40s, I literally stopped coloring my hair. I used to color my hair all different colors. I would do reds and um, pretty browns. And my natural color is actually a very dark brunette, the color that I was when my husband met me. So... But I went for many years um, with my hair gray. It took a while to grow it out. I just cut it short and kept cutting it, cutting it till it got to where it was all gray. And then I, um, you know, just started noticing that my hair was thinning and thinning and thinning and it just wasn't getting better. Um, slowly, 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 particularly in the crown, on the sides. The back stayed pretty full for a long time. Um, and it is still the fullest that I have, but it's still, now it's much, much thinner than it ever was before. I used to have a lot of hair. This is a really hard experience for women because your hair is a large portion of the way you look. And it was really tough on me. So after I quit working, I started to wear hair bands like this because I could pull my hair down to my scalp and it kind of, I guess, 
made it a little less noticeable that my hair was thin. In fact, a not really anybody mentioned it to me, not that they would, but um, I do think it helped a lot, but it was something that I couldn't wear all the time because obviously you can't wear a headband in a dressy situation or whatever. So there were times when I would actually style my hair without a hairband and it looked okay, but I never felt good. And I always had to really fight with it to get it to be normal. So five and a half years ago, I became a plant-based eater and I really hoped that that would help my hair because I eat such a high nutrient diet and so little processed food. I eat some, but very little. And um, what I've found is that actually my thinning hasn't really gotten worse in the last five and a half years, maybe a little bit, but it, um, it's still there. It hasn't gotten better. I actually sent a message to Dr. Greger and I asked him if there was anything that he could share with me that I could share with you about female pattern baldness and if there was any kind of plant-based cure or any kind of help that we could get with our nutrition to improve our condition. And I actually got this message back from him and I'm really looking forward to his videos on this topic. So stay tuned because once his videos come out, I'm going to be talking about them in one of my videos and sharing with you guys the research that's been done related to androgenic alopecia and what we can do from a plant-based perspective on maybe slowing down that process or reversing it if that's possible. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say and I'll be looking out for those videos. So yesterday I went and got a haircut on my bio hair. This is what you call your bio hair when you wear a wig. And then I also had my wig cut and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But unfortunately the haircut that I got, she did a good job cutting it considering how difficult it is to cut my hair right now. But then she used a flat iron on my hair. She did use some heat um, spray on it before, but she actually singed all of my hair. So I'm about to take the hairband off and show you what my hair looks like, but it literally is singed, like burned, like fire. <laughs> so I'm pretty upset right now about it because I really can't even go out with my bio hair without you noticing it. But let me go ahead and show you what it looks like without my hairband on. So. Um, I usually put my hair over to this side, and this is actually the opposite on the video, but I don't know if you can see this. Oh, I'm holding the wrong side. So she literally singed my hair. There are brown and tan marks where it was singed. And as you can see, I'm very, very thin on top here. I don't have very much hair. Let me go the other way so you can see. So um, I have little, little baby hairs here in the front that uh, it's like this, this is a common um, thing that happens with female pattern baldness is you get sort of this line across the, um, across the uh, forehead there with little hairs. And so that's, you know, that's tough. But when I have it in a hairband, that kind of pulls back and you can't see that so much. So let me put that back on to show you. So when I pull that back, you can't see it as much. So I've been able to disguise this pretty well for a long time, but you can tell that my hair is just not in good condition. It's really, really thin, and it's being that it's gray, it's very coarse, like feeling, it's actually not super coarse feeling, but it's a little bit coarse feeling, but it's also very frizzy. So I've kind of the worst of all worlds because it's gray, it's thin, it's, oh my gosh, it's a mess. But anyway, so I would like to introduce you to a change that I have made recently. I did a bunch of research and I'm gonna do some videos on this of wearing a wig because a lot of people who have androgenic alopecia 
find that it's just easier to wear a wig. It's easier to just throw on a wig in the morning. It just makes you feel more confident. It makes you feel better. And it definitely affects your overall look when you have a little bit more hair. And so I had to decide, do I want to do gray hair like the color that I am because I'm 53 years old and, you know, I am gray. Or do I want to go back to my bio color or my original bio color or do I want to do another color? And so I decided to go back to my original bio color for the first wig. And I do have another wig coming that's actually a lighter wig. So I'm going to be going over each of these wigs in videos. I'm going to be talking about what types of wigs there are and how expensive they are and how to purchase them and just to help anybody who's interested. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Kristen. So here I am with my new look. This is the Kristen wig by John Renault, and I'm going to be talking a lot more about wigs later. Um, I'm not even going to really tell you a description about this wig right now, but I just wanted to show you that um, I did choose to use my original bio color. I actually had this wig trimmed a little bit because it was about one and a half inches longer, and it was a little bit heavy for me and heavy for my face. So anyway, here I am with a wig, and I feel really great about it. It's hard to get used to. It feels... You know, it feels weird to have lots of hair. I, I really like it though. I love the feeling of being able to, you know, swing your hair and have, um, you know, have these tresses to, um, to move around. So it does feel really good. It's been a long time since I've had that. Also, um, I like this. I, I like that I can pull this over and just put a little clip in it, which I've, I've been doing a bit. I like that because it keeps it on my face, like when I'm working in the kitchen. Ooh, that, that looks kind of silly the way I did it. I'm trying to do it here in this camera. It's not as easy to do, but you get the idea. Anyway, stay tuned for more on this topic. I'll be talking about how to choose a wig, what it feels like to wear a wig, and what wigs so far I have tried and like. 